Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. A um, couple things I'll talk about before I get into today's message. Um, the first thing is remember that um, I send out a forbidden newsletter on Monday, and I think that you're going to want to read the uh, newsletters for the next couple, three weeks. A lot of you have asked questions about Pfizer and AstraZeneca and um, Moderna, and I think you know what I'm getting at here. So you might want to get the forbidden newsletter. And then the forbidden video is posted at wellnessforumhealth.com. So make sure you go there to find the forbidden video. Um, as always, career training. Um, we have an alternative to dietetics. We have training programs for medical doctors and nurses and dietitians and people who have no training in healthcare whatsoever. So um, if you're interested in that, uh, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com. Um, remember, Make Americans Free Again uh, calls on Thursday at noon for people who are interested in joining forces with us all over the country. And then at 6 o'clock p.m. on Thursday night, meeting is here. And of course, uh, Thursday, Tuesday night at Wellness Forum is back. And I had a couple of people emailed and said, what's the difference between Tuesday night and Thursday night? Well, Tuesday night is Wellness Forum Health, like our company's activities. Thursday night is Make Americans Free Again. And so, um, and then of course we have upcoming teleconference classes, kidney disease, food allergies, research boot camp. So those of you who are constantly writing to me and saying, well, what do you say when somebody says this? And what do you say about this study? Well, how about if I show you what to say? And uh, we're doing, I teach a real long version of this course that has paper writing and um, it's very expensive because there's paper writing and I have to do a lot of grading and that sort of thing. But this is gonna be like a Saturday afternoon boot camp, two to 4.30 on Saturday afternoon. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, so if you're interested in that or um, HIV AIDS, I'm teaching Friday and Saturday, March 5th and 6th, boot camp style, uh, lots of information to share there. Okay, so last week um, I posted a video uh, that dealt with what's going on with kids in school. And, um, and, and it's, it, I mean, it's what's going on with children in general is ridiculous. And that's the forbidden video deals with uh, what's going on with children as well this week, uh, which you can see at Wellness Form Health. But um, I got something back from a teacher that I thought was worth sharing with you. Uh, and I'm just gonna read you the email that she sent me. She said, first, you stated that most teachers are age 40 or under, so that should not be an issue, meaning that um, it's not the at-risk population. And it is true that most teachers are younger, but this person writes, I'm almost 65 with no health impairments. And I will say that I'm probably more healthy than, majority, than the majority of teachers on my staff. Although this should not be a reason for shutdown, the vast majority of my staff is unhealthy, which helps fuel this nonsense. The good news is I'm not on the vaccine schedule our district has sent out, although I will most likely lose my job when the state mandates vaccines, which is coming. Every day, more and more students drop out of Zoom class. Now, due to the problems caused by this ridiculousness, we've been told that we cannot give a zero, but must award at least a 30% for absolutely nothing. In addition, students get attendance credit just for signing in on Google Classroom. They don't want true absentee numbers, although I track through paper attendance. I have students I've never seen from whom I've never received an assignment and who will be given a P at the end of the semester. This P stands for let's pass them this semester in the hope that they will engage next semester. The damage we've done to a generation of students has not yet been revealed. The older students have learned how to play the system for the most part and can claim victim in order to get their diploma in the spring. Can you imagine how this will play out in the workplace? I have been called out for being too rigorous during such a time as this. I am doing less than half my curriculum. There is no accountability whatsoever. Students on IEPs are even more tragically accommodated in an unacceptable manner. Needless to say, my integrity will not allow this farce to continue, so I'm planning to find a job in the private sector. Those schools have remained open and have the entire time. One local school had their Christmas music concert. It was wonderful. Most private schools have waiting lists of hundreds of students whose parents want them in class. My other option is tutoring, as I believe the need will be great. Um, and another option I'll insert here is people are writing to me and saying, I'm thinking of starting a little school of my own to like do the organized version of homeschooling for parents that don't want to do it, but clearly want their children out of this environment that I'm describing now. So that's a great idea too. Thank you for your continued efforts, continuing with her email. 
I've written my state representatives to see if anyone would entertain Ohio's lawsuit. Our emperor had just combined counties into regions, which pretty much puts us opening up down the tubes. Maybe time to move to Florida. Keep sending ideas on how we can work at our state levels to fight the madness. You're so appreciated. So um, this is what's really going on in schools. I mean, in addition to the stuff that I talked about last week, um, you know, we, we're just, we're going to turn out a couple generations of idiots. If we don't change course pretty soon. And I think one of the, I have written into the Make Americans Free Again business plan that at some point in time, we're going to have to do two things, small business rescue, which we're working on that right now. And we're going to have to do children rescue. And what I mean by that is taking kids who range from slightly behind, if they come from reasonably good families where there's somebody paying attention and can supplement what's going on or make sure that the child is actually in class, these kids might not be so terrible, terribly off and could get back on track with a little extra help. But we're going to have millions of children who are now functionally illiterate. They've been out of school. They weren't doing well before this because of the neighborhoods they live in and the schools that they're attending. And they have gone backwards to a place where reclaiming them is going to be an awful lot of work. And that's something that we have a plan for. And uh, I can't focus on it just yet because I think I got to set the people free first. And we're working on that very hard here in Ohio. So um, anyway, I think that um, the schools, the school systems and the boards of education are not publishing what I just read to you. In fact, I at one point in time, a couple months ago, actually went searching for data um, to see uh, you know, what, what was going on uh, in terms of are, are they awarding grades or are there going to be school report cards or whatever. And there's just nothing except for how well everybody's adjusting. Well, I guess that's a pretty broad term, how well everybody's adjusting. It can mean different things to different people. So uh, this is what's really happening to kids in school, and it should concern us all. All right, that's all for today. As usual, uh, pass this on to somebody or anybody who you think would enjoy hearing a different perspective, and I'll be back to you tomorrow with more news.